started. Let's roll. Well, I got questions. Hold on. Hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I like you. <laughs> hey, uh, how was it uh, the Cedar Run game coming to life for you last week, and was it something that's sustainable? Sure. Um, you know, obviously going in uh, all season long, you know, it, it's been our, like I've told you guys last week, about going through the fundamentals, the belief um, of what we're going out and doing each day in the practice field. Uh, again, broken record, but it takes all 11 for the run game or the pass game to work. Um, and so when you see it and you see uh, guys playing with the speed off the ball, receivers, tight ends, O-line, the backs hitting it, quarterbacks carrying out the fakes, um, you know, we were fortunate that, uh, you know, we had some good fortune in the run game, and hopefully that continues. We're playing, obviously, a very good run defense and a good defense overall. Um, so it'll take all 11 again this week like it did last week. Yeah, that was my, uh, my follow-up. You kind of jumped ahead on me. Uh, going I already had the cliff notes, dude. Yeah. I like, already passed along, man. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the challenge of uh, the number one uh, ranked defense, what makes them, uh, you know, what have they been able to do to, to keep the yards down to 81 a game? Oh, yeah, there's probably a lot to go through on that. The reality is um, what Coach Bowles does, uh, what he's done in his past, what he does in Tampa, uh, gone against him a number of times, not just in Tampa Bay, but other places. Um, he has the same philosophical belief of how those guys play. They play physical, they play tough, they play fast. Um, they're very aware of what their calls are. Uh, they don't make mental. And, you know, there's, there's some pretty impressive guys up front that are hard to move with great linebackers with great speed with a secondary that knows how to fit the run. Um, so all together, you know, you can see why uh, over not just this year, um, through the course really of of him coordinating why it's been harder to run against him. Um, and again, it's a credit to the coaches for sure, but also the players, uh, their buy-in, their ability to, to sell it on the run, make the game one-dimensional. Um, there's a reason why they obviously have been good for a long period of time. Uh, no secret, uh, we got our work cut out for us for sure. How do you scheme to maybe get more opportunities or more, more better, terrible English, but more better opportunities for Kyle? Well, I think, it, you know, and I think I've, I've said this before, too, you know, there's times where obviously you go through a play and you design a concept and you put certain guys in certain positions. Um, that guy might be one in the progression and he might be, depending on coverage, two or three. And the ball sometimes goes to number four because the di defense dictated it. The reality is, you know, you can design concepts at times where a certain player might be one. Uh, the reality is if the defense dictates or coverage dictates the ball to go somewhere else, um, that's what it is. We obviously don't want to force any outcomes. I think that's how you get bad offense or bad quarterback play when you try to force an outcome. We also understand that we have certain guys with the ball in their hand that can make a difference. Um, so again, it, it always goes back to the coach's jobs to make sure that we, we help the players be successful. But at the end, we're still going against a defense that obviously knows um, what they're doing and what they're trying to take away. So it's, it's definitely a chess match. Um, but again, I go back to the fact that just not forcing any outcomes um, in that situation. And again, understanding who our players are and what their strengths are and making sure we put them in the best position. Yeah. With Cordero, you were there. Ah, oh, there it is. There, oh, oh. Woo! Boy, three and a half minutes into the CP question? Yeah. I love it. You know what? I, I, I'm no. just, yeah, I can just play it, man. No, uh, with Cordero, you were there last year in Chicago the first conversation happened. You were on the offensive <coughs> staff. What went into it as an offense, as an offensive coaching unit that said, I want to have this conversation with Cordero and make him, more, I guess, put him more in this current position that he's in than what he had been doing in it's a great question. I just, I don't have a policy of just not going back and talking about things that we've did in the past. Um, to me, with CP, with his ability, um, I've said it before, and I'll be a broken record in this one. Um, good football player, plays the right way, um, dynamic with the ball in his hands. And I think, and again, I think a lot's made, obviously, of, of what CP um, is able to do from a different standpoint of at receiver, as a kick returner, as a running back. Um, other teams, right? And he's not, that's not the first team he's been with. And I've been with him in other places, obviously. Um, but what you have to respect about CP, in my opinion, is this. Um, the way, he, the way he goes about his job. It's not just the physical part. 
I think that's easy for everybody to see when he has success is the physical part. Oh, he scored or he made a great play. But the fact is when you move a piece, like we move our players, but if we're talking about CP, he moves around. It's the, it's the mental part that during the week in which he puts himself in position so when he goes out there on Sunday, he's not thinking about it. Um, to me, that's as much of the credit, um, not just for him, but all the players, but we're talking about CP of being locked in mentally um, that obviously doesn't get seen because that's just behind closed doors. Um, but I do have a, a much appreciation, like I do for a lot of these guys that we put in different spots and ask them to do different things. But just because I've grown with CP in different spots, just to see his growth in that has been awesome. What was it that he initially saw then mentally that said, okay, he can, he can maybe handle this? Yeah, I think, again, spending time with him over the course of whatever years, I, I see a very instinctual, smart football player that understands space. Typically, when you see guys like that, they usually, you know, guys talk about that at, from the quarterback spot, but there's other positions where you see it, um, and you see that with CP. So, again, um, he just wants an opportunity to go out there, like a lot of guys, to make plays and getting in position to do so. And when he has an opportunity to take advantage of it, and uh, as a staff, as, as his teammates, I'm sure they appreciate that as well. From a game plan perspective, what's the right balance between we want to do what we do well versus we want to do what we want to focus on what they do less well? Yeah, sure. That's another good question. I think when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, you have to make sure that guys can rely on their fundamentals and what we've taught them and their foundation, which is core concept plays. You might get to them different ways. You might dress them up. You might attack it differently because the defense might dictate that. But at the end of the day, you want to be strong where you're strong and what you built. Um, usually when you start to add plays during the week, uh, the one-timers, yeah, there's a chance they can be successful, but the reality is there's not a lot of banked reps in those plays. So you have to be very confident and in, in, you have to understand there's probably unintended consequences if they don't get the exact look offensively that we were preparing for. Because now there's nothing really to rely back on in terms of the reps. So again, I think at the end of the day, you want to be able to give the defense different potential looks, but then you have to be able to run what you believe in your core concepts, which you've drilled since really the spring. So there's definitely a balance of that. Where do you think you guys are strong right now? Well, I think for us, right, it's about how we want to play the game. Um, I think at times people get caught up uh, about plays, rightfully so. But I do think there's a stylistic, philosophical way you want to play football. You hear me talk about the defense a lot when you guys ask questions about the opponents. And usually I stay away from the actual tactics and more about the philosophical beliefs. They play fast. They're violent. They run to the ball. Those things where you see that, and you see that's a culture. I think when you speak offensively, I think it's the same thing. I think it's, again, plays are important. The reality is the buy-in, the culture, and the belief that whatever we call or how we practice it's going to work. So to me, it's much more about the confidence and culture than it is about the specific plays that we're good at. And again, each week presents an opportunity to, to go out there, practice it, continue to preach it, and have the players and coaches buy into the same theory that confidence matters, culture matters. Uh, one of the, the, since we're talking about that, the, 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 the core uh, philosophical um, beliefs of the offensive line, and did you see more of what you're looking for from that group against Jacksonville? Yeah, so for me, you know, and I'm sure if you ask Coach Ledford or the offensive line, they'll probably, they'll probably say the first thing that comes to their mind is speed off the ball, right, when you're talking about the offensive line. Um, there's a certain standard, uh, which I, you know, is, is kept within their room and within our offense about how we want all positions to play, not just the offensive line. Um, but at the end, you want to be able – I always felt this as a player or a coach, specifically now that you become a coach in this league. When you put the film on, you want to make sure – that what your belief of what you want it to look like matches. And it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but you want to strive. If there's something you believe that you want the offense to look like or the defense to look like, um, you go out each day and you want that to be represented on the film. And so as we go out there, each game presents obviously a different opportunity and a, and a challenge. But still, you go back to your core philosophical beliefs of what you want that to look like. And again, we keep that within the offense um, with the coaches and the players. But there is a standard in which we want it to look in terms of practice and game.
terms of the offensive lines role and, and how you guys were able to run, what did, uh, what did you see from uh, from that group? And did you see better you know, spacing and lanes and all those types of things? Was there anything different there? Yeah, I think I will go back to here's what I appreciate about the offense and the offensive line is throughout week one to where we are today, there's been a consistency in terms of who they are and how they show up each day. So you go out there and you watch it and you guys are out there for the pre-practice, right? That O-line, different position groups are doing their individual. And they continue to pound the individual, the fundamentals over and over and over because there's a belief that you continue to do something over and over that you believe in, you know you're gonna eventually see the results. And you don't change weekly just because something might necessarily work if you believe in the big picture. And again, I will say this, like I said last week, the same questions that came up. To me, this game will always come back to the fundamentals at each position, regardless of how talented you are. You can get away with some wild plays because maybe you're just that talented. Reality is sustainability for a long period of time within a season or a career comes down to fundamental play. And if you're solid in the fundamentals and you can rely on them in times of where the situation is hectic, then I think you're gonna have a successful play, player, and, and coach. I think when you start to change all those things and go and try to do something outside of the ordinary or what you're taught or what you believe, then I think you get inconsistent results. So at the end of the day, it comes back to fundamental, foundational belief and fundamentals in the physicals um, out there for us as players and coaches. Can you talk about the concept of theory of positionless football before? When you see a guy like Patterson, we're going back there, Back him again. Okay. No, but surprise. There's no Michigan attire right now. No. No. <laughs> now with Delay, with the Ohio. Delay, you Ohio State fan? I didn't go to Michigan. I went to Cincinnati. Still though, there's still allegiance to the Sun Bar. Just okay. Just say. All right. I mean, just thought. Just thought I'd see something. I mean, you, you wear red all the time, but you know. There's probably a reason. <laughs> Could be a reason. I'm Could a be a reason. But uh, when you look at that whole at the concept of do you see more guys like him potentially, or more guys attempt to do that in the future? Or is a guy, is a guy like him, maybe a guy like Debo, a guy like Percy, so one-off that it could never become the norm, or semi-norm? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. I think there's examples that you just gave, right, yeah. of certain individuals um, who have been able to line up at different spots. It, I mean, I know how football is hard. I mean, there's really good players all over the place. And some don't even see the field. Um, to be able to play multiple spots and be effective, um, yeah, I mean, I would say that's a very unique skill set. Um, I mean, I'd have to really, really think about it. But from that standpoint, yeah, I mean, there's certain examples of guys doing it. Um, some guys just want to stay where they're at and be strong where they're strong and, and not be moved. And I've been on teams where certain guys didn't feel comfortable being on the right side and only want to be on the left side and play wide receiver because of certain cuts. I mean, this thing, it, sometimes it comes down to the player and what he's comfortable with and, and how far as a coach you can push them to be their best. But some guys are just better left alone. So, I mean, what type of player does it take then? I mean, you talked about a little bit before mentality wise. What type of players it really takes to be able to do? Well, yeah, I think it's not just physical. Right. Like that was the point I was trying to make earlier. There's a whole mental stress of being moved different spots, lining up different positions, getting different looks, playing against different players. Um, so it's not just one size fits all. I mean, there, you have to have the physical and mental capacity to go out and, and operate that way. Um, but I'm sure there's guys out there that maybe can do it, just haven't got the opportunity yet. I know you know about the messenger guards from the old days there. How'd you all come out with the rotating centers uh, operation? Yeah, I, I don't think, you know, as we, we approached the week last week and went into the game, um, I thought the guys, players, um, Matt, I don't think anybody blinked. I think, uh, again, we strive and we talk about the competition. Um, you get the best version of guys. You get to see not just physically, but you also get to see uh, their makeup. Um, and again, I thought guys uh, in particular, those two came out, uh, gave everything they had, uh, played the best of their ability. And they, the best thing about it was they also rooted for each other. And I think when you, have, when you start to build your team and you talk about the offense and the, and the togetherness um, as individual positions or together, um, when you have guys who want to compete, 
but also have the best interests of each other, uh, I think you have a chance to, to build something. And you can tell uh, with those two, no animosity. They competed, they pushed each other, uh, but they also had each other's back and they, um, they looked after each other. Anything else? Are we good? Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs>